Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Camelot Spite League. My name is Halanu, alongside Dr. Shrew with the Wolfie Pup on our spectate, bringing you the Arthur Division Gauntlet Games. We are starting off with Cyberpunk Otters versus Order of the Blight. Uh, should be fun. It's the beginning of Gauntlet. You know, got to see what these teams have in store for us today. Yeah, it should be should be a very good, uh, interesting matchup. Best of one, so it's it's either get this victory or you go home and don't get to continue into the playoffs. So an important matchup. Both of these teams are going to be trying to uh, give it their best to uh, continue into the tournament. Absolutely. A little note on rosters for today. I believe we have the normal roster for Cyberpunk Otters. For Order of the Blight, it will be their roster, but with a Lancelot sub in the support role, Trixie Dreams coming up to fill the support role for Gauntlet. But taking a look at picks and bands, got Thor, Vamana, Odin, and then we got Hercules, Hades, and Yamoja. Anything standing out to you, Mr. Shrew? All pretty standard bands to me. I Odin would be the closest thing to an outlier. I feel like he's really good in counter matchups. Uh, so maybe maybe the otters just know have a plan of what they want to play and they know Second. that Odin stops it. Uh, in which case, I love that band. 
Uh, but otherwise, pretty standard across the board. None of those six picks are really something you want to uh, to see uh, in your lobbies. Agreed. We do see the first pick, Sir Cat. Sir Cat definitely a jungler that's gotten a lot better. That buff on her ultimate, giving her that crit percent chance built in when you level it. Always going to be good. Definitely a pick that can be counterpicked though pretty heavily. So surprised they're valuing it so oh, wow. highly. Assume that's going into the jungle for I believe Cyber is their jungle today, though it might be Bajan. I'm not super sure. <laughs> but on the other side we do see Habwa locked in. Atlas. Assume that will be going into the jungle for Jinxed, but can be flexed into that mid lane as well. Hell, hell. The Surter, Hell, and Atlas locked in on either side. Hell, to me, is a support pick right now. So the fact that they've locked it in with the Atlas is a bit confusing to me. Hell can play mid. Bloody She's a mage. loves this pick in mid. Bloody Does loves he? them. Okay. Uh, okay. I believe he's died double digit de deaths on it. Almost every time he's played it. <laughs> he does like it. I I could not tell you why. Um it doesn't it hasn't had the most success for them this season, but he does like it. <laughs> well, if it's something he's comfortable on, maybe he can he can get the success with it this time. We'll have to see what goes on as the Martikaris is locked in on the other side. Would you like to see this pick in the mid lane or to keep it over there in duo? I like it more in mid. And the fact that they went for Habwa, assuming that is in the jungle, I think running a double ADC comp here with them already in mid would make a lot of sense. Still have your magic Agreed. damage. Also, shout out to Blight for just picking all of the characters we don't have images for. <laughs> it is a certain Martigorous. We don't have the <laughs> images loaded in, loaded into uh, the program yet, but they do draft. They didn't skip two picks. <laughs> They, they did as well. They did indeed, is what I meant to say. The Jingwei and the Guan Yu taken away uh, on their side of bands as the Sobek is the first of two bands taken away by the Otters. Uh, Terra makes a lot of sense to me. She's an unbelievably good support right now. Uh, but Sobek, that's, that's, that's a little surprising to me. I don't know if maybe someone on Blight has a very good Sobek in the pool, or if they're just worried yeah, about I'm... it, but we haven't seen a lot of Sobek. Yeah, I'm very surprised to see that get banned out, especially when they have a Lancelot sub playing support. Uh, mm -hmm. Sobek is a pretty high execution character. Um, if, you, if you miss your pluck, or you, you, know, you they beat your pluck, a lot of times you are just dead. It's a little bit surprised to see bands going towards the support uh, when they we they are aware that there's a sub in it's it's not a secret. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, Trixie Dreams is off rolling. Normally the jungler in that Lance team, and he just played jungle in the Merlin game uh, earlier, so he's he's not in his most comfortable role. So I agree that double banning him out, especially with the Sobek, is an interesting call. See the Yanis locked in though which leads me to believe that Marty will be heading to that duo lane. Uh, so not that double ADC combo that we were talking about, but Yanis does bring a lot of mobility and rotation uh, capabilities to the squad, so I don't hate to see it locked in here. Yeah, it's it's okay in the meta right now. I mean, it's kind of one of those picks you pick just to have fun and then rotate around the map, but it does legitimately, you know, the oh, team fight from that character is always going to be good along as well. As long as you're utilizing the portals well, um, I believe Lake is probably playing mid today, but again, not super sure where they're sending people. Uh, it is a pick he enjoys if that's where it ends up going. On the other side, see Thaw in Cernanos. So I'm Athena. guessing that's a hell solo with the Thaw locked in? I mean, it has, to, it has to be hell solo, right? I would assume so. I can't... I can't. Yeah, yeah, unless it's oh, Atlas solo. Wait, I've got it. It's, this is slightly confirmed by the fact that I know this is right. Uh, Bloody played solo with their last set. So my guess is this is Bloody Lifetime, still playing as hell, just in solo lane with ah. the Thoth in mid. Interesting, interesting. I, we'll have to see how that goes. I'm also surprised we saw Cernanos lock in ninth overall in the draft. I feel like he's constantly getting banned or first picked, second picked. Getting that late into the draft is surprising for 
for, you know, an, an argument could be made he is the best uh, hunter right now, but he's at least top two or three. Uh, interesting to me that it made it that deep into the draft. And we had the Athena pick up for Trixie Dreams uh, off rolling there up in Arthur, which is, I feel like, a pretty good pick uh, if you're going to give a, uh, a lower tiered player who's off rolling a, uh, a Guardian. I feel like Athena is fairly easy to pilot. Yeah, I love that. It's easy to play. It's relatively safe. You know, as long as you're getting your dash stop off, you're going to be okay. And, you know, not not the hardest uh, combo to land in Smite. So I love that pick. You know, as long as the Defender of the Olympuses are coming, you know, as long as they're not afraid to use that ultimate, honestly, that's sometimes the uh, trap Athena players fall into is trying to hold that ability for such a long time. But a lot of times it's better to just use it. Uh, I am a little curious where what roles everybody like the players are playing on both teams. Mm -hmm. We've seen both of these teams play some different stuff throughout the season. I mean, it's been I think it's been a month since we've seen Blight actually play a set. <laughs> so honestly, not sure where any of them are going. To be fair, uh, historically, uh, uh, Jinxed has been a jungler. Uh, Adzi is normally so. Lake is normally a mid laner, Thomas is normally an ADC, so I assume that's where they're going, but let's see. actually get a look into game now, is going to be Jinx playing the Surter Jungle. Yeah, How do you feel I'd... about Surter Jungle? I, I don't hate Surter Jungle, I feel like he was better on release in that jungle uh, role, but with the with the Hebwa picked up, I I kind of just didn't, I took for granted that Surter would be going solo, and that Habwa would be in the jungle spot, but it doesn't seem like that's what is going to be the call. I feel like Surtur can bring a lot in jungle in terms of damage and engage, but if he uses that end of days ultimate to get in, he's just kind of in. And if he doesn't get the picks, it's so hard for him to get out. So it's kind of high risk, high reward play, in my opinion. We'll have to see if Jinx can, uh, can pilot it more towards the reward side. I agree. I do like that he's gone ahead and picked up that blink. Um, it does make him less reliant on needing to alt in to get in. And once Surtur's on top of you, it can be really hard to get away from him. Character's chase is so good. With the slow, the movement speed buff to himself, a range stun can just be really hard to actually get away from him once he's on top of you. Um, it does mean that he's playing Surtur into Circuit without beats. Which I can't imagine yes. is... That's the scary. best. <laughs> um, probably not going to feel great. It is the Hell solo against the Hebo solo. What a wild world. Hell is almost dying to this buff. <laughs> Thoth does not want to help him with that yeah. buff clear. <laughs> I suppose just thinking Bloody's got the healing, he'll be fine. He'll have the blue buff to sustain up. But yeah, Hell did definitely get quite low there. Quite low there. Looking at the mid lane here, the suitor having pressure, not too surprising. Uh, I'm a little surprised we don't see conduit gem out of either of these players. Both both characters that can build conduit really well. Same thing in the solo lane. Both of those characters can build conduit gem, and mm -hmm. it gives you significantly more pressure. And neither are choosing to do so so far. Yeah, I, I, especially with the Giannis, I quite like the uh, Conduit Gem into Chrono's Pendant start, that kind of Season 9 play style. I feel like Giannis is like the only god that still really feels good with that. Yeah, you feel quite good with it, still, in my opinion. Uh, over in the lane, pretty normal things going on. Do you have Cthulhu Senpai going towards the Prothetic Cloak? Let's uh, just an easy character to stack it on and see the little bit safer don't hate it at all. Just the Thebes rush from the Athena. You're the sub. The prophetic cloak start can make you a little bit more susceptible in the early game. So I, I don't hate just playing it safe. Get your Thebes. Yeah, you'll you'll be a-okay. <laughs> a lot. The more I can take a look at this Order of the Blight Draft, the more they are so mobile. I mean, they have the Giannis ultimate to get the whole team around where they need. Defender of Olympus is going to allow Trixie Dreams to get wherever he wants to go. 
the end of days ultimate out of jinx is like semi-global and lets him do that and even just water carpet from habwa lets him get around the map they they should be able to to rotate and group and catch people off guard as this game progresses Agreed. Definitely a mobile team. Um, I think something that we could see come out here is the Yana's rotations, but then also Athena all onto Jinxed as he's alting in. Uh, okay. I, this team has not been practicing. Um, they definitely have not been practicing with Trixie Dreams as the Yana's under so much pressure used his portal aggressively and gets punished for it. First blood going the way of Venetus on this circuit. Good start coming out from the otters here. Definitely, and it doesn't look like the circuit is done yet. Heading over to uh, try and did Luba. see it. Circuit's just gonna sit here for some. Does cancel the jump that does consume the cooldown. I'm all gonna take a peek around here. Should be able to confirm it. Looks like he does confirm his own blue. Pretty important over on that blob on the other side of the map. It's like an attempted purple invade that just gets dragged under tower. So, yeah, do you lose a little bit of golden XP, but at least you get your buff. Tyra has been low this entire time. I would not, I don't imagine when I think about uh, Marticarus, I don't, you know, picture him as like an early game pressure god, but he they've been able to get the poke uh, with that sub on. Uh, of Trixie Dreams, they've been they've been getting all the pressure here in the dual lane. Yeah, it, it's he doesn't have great clear, but honestly, the Athena is a really nice lane partner for him because taught into the Marticarus one is a lot of damage, and That's a good point. you don't really want to give away your beads just on something like that. I mean, his beads just came back up in this lane. Uh, also worth noting that Cyber is usually a jungler, not in ADC, so mm. perhaps just a little bit less comfortable in that lane as the gank comes out onto the hell. Beads are used early, the crushing wave oh. just off the mark. Not going to find anything. Giannis all isn't going to get connect. Circuit's waiting, but just seeing if that Hablaw's going to push back up. He's about halfway up. Sir Kent doesn't have blink. Oh no, Ozzy backing here. Does have the beads, but doesn't have that ult available. Mm. Could just be an ult coming out here for Sir Kent. Doesn't even pull his beads? Questionable. I feel like you at least want to pull his beads there. I mean, he, he does get out once. Once, you know, some abilities are juked out, positions pretty well. He does just always get out there, but surprised they didn't take the time to at least pull his beats there. I agree. I guess uh, must have just decided once that Cobra, Cobra's kiss was off the mark and he got knocked up, it just wasn't really worth uh, expending anything. Probably wanting to take that ultimate into a different lane, but getting the beads off of Hebo is would have been quite a, quite a pickup. So a bit questionable for me as well. All things considered, though, this Thoth is two levels ahead in the mid lane. Good taunt from the Athena, but Lake not close enough to follow up on the Giannis. It actually takes half of his health bar for the trouble. <laughs> Thoth just sitting on full Spear of Death, though, while Giannis still sitting on that TPU. He just hits so much harder right now. Another thing I wanted to, to point out, that first blood going the way of the circuit, that extra gold... Uh, he has a fully, he had a fully built transcendence earlier and has some 10 stacks already. So has, having that advantage over Jinx on the Surter is not, is not, you know, the end of the world if you're Jinx, but it's something to keep an eye on if you continue to build up these stacks quicker because when you fully evolve that transcendence, you get so much, it's so much of a power spike uh, that you can Take a look at Jinx, your defender of the Olympus comes through. Yana's ult does connect quite a bit of damage to the Zerket. The taunt back in onto the Atlas. Looks like they're trying to chase him down, but he's pretty tanky right now. The dash comes back up and everybody gets out. A lot of ultimates extended on the top side of Order of the Blight. Thoth ult, not quite enough damage to set Jinx down. Alt suspended. I think it was just out of range. Just out of range. 
lot of damage on both sides, but nobody going to take a spill there. No, but as you said, Coke is just, he has so much damage right now. 3,500 sitting at the top of the lobby. Just the moment he steps up into those team fights and just gets one rotation of those enhanced autos off, you just see people's health bars disappear. Definitely the return gank coming out here on the Hamwa. The beads are used, the ult is late, and the kill go to the Circat now 2 and L. Interesting, it looks like Circat's going towards a Magi's in that second spot. So hmm. just immediately pivoting to kind of the hybrid style of Circat. We have seen both styles beads forced out of Lake. Good pull there coming out of Cthulhu. But... Uh, do you see that hybrid circuit getting built quite a bit right now? So it seems like that's the route that Venetus wants to go with this late game. I feel like Magis is good into the comp of what the Otters have. They have a lot of CC and a lot of ways to disrupt you as in the days it's forced to get used there. But I, I feel like it'll help if that is where uh, he ends up building. Um, it'll help him kind of stay in these fights for longer and not be forced to use those beads and try to get a little bit more damage done. So I don't I don't mind the pickup uh, this early in the build. Yeah, probably not what I would have expected to come out this early in the build, but it's never going to feel bad. I and mean, you are just really hard committing to that hybrid style. I mean, it's, it definitely is you know, going to accomplish that. Uh, in the mid lane though, this stuff is just so far ahead. And also the the mind ruin coming out really early from the honest. The gank onto St. Thomas the ultimate is good. Does use the beat as well though. Now perhaps a rotation back over Lake Alts and does clip Cyber with fully under his tower. Shouldn't be too much going on here. Jumps into the grass, immediately has to use his beads. Does the circuit finds the ult onto Lake. The last hit goes to Bajan. And oh. Bajan picks up another onto St. Thomas. This off is hitting like a truck. The rotation back in from Jinx. Not going to be in time. Realizes he's staring into three full HP members of Cyberpunk Otters. Good rotation coming out of Bajan. He got a lot of farm there along with the two kills. Caught an extra wave before heading over to that duo lane. Lake is just so far behind now. Going going to Vine Rune first item, which I understand into the hell. But you're not gonna see that hell for probably another ten minutes. And Divine Ruin on the characters. Not usually what you want to build. Sometimes yeah. you don't build it at all just because he doesn't proc it super well. No, he really doesn't. And like you said, it's not gonna hell is not someone you're gonna be fighting too often. I feel like you definitely could have picked up Desolation first and grabbed that Divine Rune second, even if you wanted to rush it. But I was I was caught off guard by Venatus's decision to jump into the grass at the beginning of that team fight and left. But it's because he knew he trusted that Bajin on that rotation that ended up working out extremely well for them to get uh, a, quite an advantage there over in that duel lane as the fight breaks out in blue bucket. Not as all doesn't connect, but the team is on its way. Jinx is is getting in there, crushing wave, not trying to close the gap isn't going to get far enough. Now the pullback in Ozzy is definitely going to die for his troubles. The dash out from Athena is now where the blade is on the run. Desperately trying to get out. The Giannis 2 is tickling the new who at this point. Bajan unafraid dashing in doing so much damage. 6,000 player damage already in the game for this stall. He's got that Rod of Tahuti, and that's pretty, that's an early pickup, but he's had the gold from these kills and all this farm that he's having to get that done. And it's just, I mean, he is swinging at this moment in time. No one can stand up to his damage. We saw how much he was doing to Trixie on the Athena, so there's just not anybody who can step up to him on this Toth right now. Absolutely not. Yeah, we've seen this early Rod Rush coming out of a lot of the SPL games. 
As it tends to happen, once the NSP SPL players start building it, everyone else kind of realizes they're usually up to something. It's Manitas is just harassing this sooner. His ultimate's down. Defender of the Olympus is channeled, but is not enough. The dash in from Bajan going to take care of Jinx now. 4 and 0 oh on this Thaw. And <laughs> Lake more for his troubles. Dash in from the Athena. Taunt is good. No follow up. Shirkat trying to get something done here as well, but forced to jump away as the Martikaris ult comes out, as does through space and time, clipping a couple members, but not for a lot of damage. This all for the Gold Fury that is up. And it looks like Order of the Blight might have came out a little bit ahead in terms of health bars. They have some positional advantage, but not enough where they feel comfortable to uh, actually pull the Fury quite yet. I feel like Cyberpunk should be able to contest this if they know what's happening, though. They, they know what's happening. Cthulhu Senpai is staring at them. <laughs> it's just wanting them to take a little bit more damage from this Fury before they decide to fight. Oh, the Taunt is good again, but again, no follow-up off of the Taunt. Jinx hovering in the air, thought about going in with that Ends of Days. Is going to get engaged on by the Serket. Still, Vortex off the mark. The pickup from the Atlas should be good. St. Thomas gets thrown back in. No beads available. No ultimate available. Does fall down to the Atlas ult. And now it's Otters who are going to pull this theory. Should be relatively free. We do see Lake here on the Giannis who could try to get the steal. They know he's there and they do not give him the chance to get it. Good final judgment to make sure that that Fury goes their way. The other side of the map. <laughs> Bloody lifetime running for his life. Did he use the beads on, I think, nothing? Maybe thought an Athena taunt was coming through. <laughs> Does get out at the end of the day. Did use the beads there, but hey, your team got Gold Fury. It's probably okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. Taking a look at the solo lane builds, I like what we're seeing out of Bloody Lifetime. I feel like that's a good uh, setup for a hell build over there in solo. Curious on your opinion, though, of a second item prophetic for uh, no. the No. Do not like. Don't get oh. soloed, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um. I think Ozzy's Ozzy cooking. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> boss has the cookbook, though, and he tried to steal his recipes, and it, it's just not working. The top into the Bajan would be a massive shutdown. I think Jinx is probably going to commit to this. Does get it. Even if he dies here, that is so worth it for the suitor. Alt out, don't quite get over the wall. <laughs> Does die for his problem, for his aggressions in the mid lane. He gets the shutdown onto Bajan. A crazy amount of gold at that point. They're diving poor Trixie under this tower. He's Doing so a tanky. good job to duke out a lot of the damage. Does eventually fall though. Just Atlas is honestly surprised he could tank for that long. But... I guess just only being 15 minutes into the game. Uh, you know, towers, towers not doing a whole lot. Beads forced out of Odzi there as well. Yeah, I uh, I hate Prophetic Cloak on Hevo. Uh, I don't like I think the only hybrid item I ever want to see, or only defense item I ever want to see on my uh, my Hebos is uh. Stone of Binding. Stone of Binding is very good mm -hmm. on that character. Doesn't hurt your DPS much. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have power on it, but with that passive, it really doesn't hurt your DPS much. Now, Cyber is going to be forced into this 1v1 with Thomas. Thomas uses the bees, doesn't have the ultimate. As I say that, immediately channels the ultimate <laughs> as soon as it comes off cooldown. But CERN going to get out of there. Okay, that is unless. What is that damage? Oh! Hey, Suter Jungle. That was a lot of damage very quickly. Did not expect that one. Now the chase is on. Ultimate coming out onto St. Thomas. Bloody solo Adzi again. <laughs> As the fight is happening in duo, portal out from Lake should be good. Trixie trying to figure out how she, how they can help this Suter, but his ultimate should have gotten so far enough away. Dash back in onto the Athena, taking so much damage, still standing. Bajan sets down the lake, did not have those beads. Now a five level lead in the mid lane. Make it another one for Bajan, who is six 
one and five and oh, no. level 16 at 16 minutes. Gee, this, this Toth is getting out of hand. But what we haven't talked about and is equally out of control is Venatus on the Circuit, second in the player damage charts, 6 0 oh, and 8 on the jungle pick there, and has that Deathbringer now. So it's just going to be doing even more damage. And he, I mean, he's having an absolutely incredible game too, and it's just kind of been slipping under the radar with how well Bajin's been playing. Yeah, Bajin's played very well, as you said, this Sirket also having a very good game. Even Bloody, Bloody the Hell is working out. He's 3-0 and 3 and 2 levels up. I I still don't like the pick, but it's working. <laughs> it's the Pyromancer goes down for free. 8,000 gold at the 17, almost 18 minute mark. It doesn't just mean a, a fire giant. I mean, they have such an early advantage here. Everybody's ahead by a, at least a, some amount of margin. No one from Order of the Blight is even stepping up towards this fire giant. Should be a good and easy pickup for the otters, and they can at least sweep the remaining towers now that they have this buff. Yeah, Giannis Alter expended uh, yeah, just a little bit early. Are gonna pick up a gold fairy though. This is not burning. They're so far behind. Venetus gets here. He oh. Excuse me. Steals it away. Beats forced out. Jinx is angry. Wants this kill onto the circuit. Does get forced into the ends of the days. Is he going to run or go back in? Does choose to run. Cthulhu picks up the Athena on the back end, and now the chase is fully on. Ozzy hits a two-man crushing wave that does no damage because he's level 16. <laughs> Oh, that slows is... down the push with Cyber being poked out. Oh, just off the mark there with that final judgment. Right, Bajin. <laughs> He's feeling himself a little bit. He not is. That much. <laughs> and that is just so crushing if you're Order of the Blight. You lose the Fire Giant, try to steal it away with the three space and time. It's just off the mark. So you decide, all right, we're at least going to get this Primal Fury. And then Venatus just rotates over and takes it away by himself, even almost winning in the 1v1 with Jinx. This this Cyberpunk Otter team is just swinging full force right now. Or for stash in from the Athena picked up. Dude, in the Athena's credit, they are taking no damage. They're very tanky despite being three levels down. So that's gotta be feel pretty good for Blight. What's not gotta feel pretty good is the fact that your T2 tower is now gone. <laughs> There's no no stopping. This the Cyberpunk Otters team, the portal combo not doing a whole lot. The Martichorus ult does find quite a bit of value, but the sustain coming out of hell, they just back up, dance around this hell for a couple seconds, it should be good to go. They really are, and have Adzi took a lot of damage, just barely not falling there in order for them to get uh, almost a kill there, try to get some damage, but as you said, the health sustain just too good as they try again. Again, Thothalt might have clipped Adzi there, but regardless, not much damage coming out from that Thothalt. It's like they are just going to give this up, realizing that the defense from Blight is surprisingly good, considering the state of the game. Do lose a T2, but no Phoenixes, at least on this push. Yeah, there's a big gold advantage, but the Otters did not back after getting fire and getting that T2. They might have a lot of gold in hand sitting on uh, some some items. They do have a, a bit. We just saw some backs come out of some of the members of the team. Um, so that, that could have been a little bit of it, but that's just great defense from this Order of the Blight squad. Uh, as you said, Trixie Dreams is doing a great job tanking up and, and being a good frontline even so far behind on this Athena, he's definitely uh, making sure that his team has the best chances possible to hold these Phoenixes. Definitely been impressed with the Athena play coming out so far. Really has not looked too bad on it. All things considered, it's really just the lead in mid that's super concerning. Jungle only down two levels, and two and three not super far behind. Odyssey only down two levels, not super far behind. ADC, Cyber has actually picked up a level lead somehow during all of this. 
Ozzy is in a lot of trouble here. <laughs> He's going to ult away. Is going to die to either the Foth or the Hell, or you know maybe both, or maybe even Venetus coming over it just for fun. <laughs> Does fall down to the Hell instead. Now moving forward, it's just a four. It was a five level lead. Now four, maybe a four and a half level lead for the Stoff in the mid lane. Has that Spear of the Magus online? Has his Tahui already built? Assume that is a. I mean, it kind of has to be a Divine Rune coming out in that 4 spot. Just wants as much flat pen as he can possibly get in this build. And I don't mind it at all. The tanks have not had that much time to scale up. Ozzy only has Prophetic Cloak for his defense. <laughs> Just, yep, 14 stacks. Gotta, gotta feel absolutely great in there, right? 100%. Just really showing why you would pick up that Prophetic Cloak. but. Finally, we see Bajin back in here. Over 3,000 gold in hand should be quite a power spike with whatever he manages to pick up. It is that Divine Ruin and a lost artifact probably heading into a... I honestly don't know. Charon's coin? For the... He both should be. Or the Toth. For the Toth, excuse me. Um... I just don't know what I would go in that last slot. Uh... I mean, that last kind of must be Charon's. He has 30% yeah. cooldown. Um, yeah. Charon's fine. I mean, if he wants to hit Max Ben, you could, probably would have preferred a Soul Reaver in that spot, but uh, Charon's is totally fine. Fire Giant did go down there to Otters. Looks like we're going to siege this mid bird. Don't want to take their time with the left side Phoenix. Just want to run it down mid, realizing they are up 10,000 gold in 23 minutes. <laughs> Did get a Spectral online coming out of the Surter, so he is a little bit tankier, but this Midbird just melts with no Soul Leader to help defend. Poor Trixie is getting pulled back in, ulted, deleted. Bajan takes down Lake as well. Another one with Thomas could potentially just be game at the 24 minute mark. It is just jinxed and Ozzy left. Ozzy did finish that rod up to Hootie. He is going to finally start doing some significant damage. It looks like it is going to be enough to maybe stop the end of the game. As they say that they walk back into the Titan room. It is just this Ebo versus the world. They are in, but that Titan is not melting particularly fast. Trying to farm some kills potentially before the end of this game might end up costing them as all of Blight has respawned outside of St. Thomas. The Yana's ult is used. Does hit Cthulhu for maybe a 400 damage. <laughs> now Jinx is thinking about the chase, realizing that they're still loosely grouped up. Going to think better about it. Cthulhu almost falls down there shell is going to save his life it does look like they pulled the beads off of bajan but <laughs> like no relics no ultimate just uh, just dead to rights there looks like he portaled through the wall saint thomas trying to get something done here but i don't know how much blight can really do here i don't know either and i I lots of low health members uh, for Order of the Blight, and we do see Trixie Dreams falling again. I feel like this this right side Phoenix could have been dead already. They kind of got a little greedy stepping into the Titan there. It seems to be going in their favor as Bajan gets another kill, nine, one, and ten on this Toad. Uh So they're definitely feeling themselves, as you said. But uh, they should be able to get this right side bird without issue now that uh, Kafiru is back. The dash in from Bajan does mean the end of St. Thomas. Now it is just this Giannis in the suitor trying to defend one more time. End of days comes out, does do a good amount of damage, but is immediately taken down by the Atlas again. Does die to the combination of Titan and Lake, gets himself onto the board before the end of this set. Gets another one as they dive Fountain trying to kill him. <laughs> but he does finally set him down. Finally they end. And they do barely end the game. Uh, a little bit of a fiesta of a game one gauntlet, but <laughs> Cyberpunk Otters are going to advance on and play the Hanford Hairnets in round two.
just a, a very, very clean uh, game out of the Otters. Until the end there, uh, they, like you said, kind of made a little bit of a fiesta. They're playing a little arena. Yeah, yeah. But throughout the rest of the game, they were just so clean at what they were doing. And I feel like the, the best way to point that out is the fact that they were getting a fire giant and setting up to siege. And I was so unconcerned about their ability to get that fire giant. I was talking about what that lost artifact that Bajan could have picked <laughs> up, why it might be built into, because they just had that much of a lead. That fire giant was a foregone conclusion. And then they were able to just march in there and take out the Titan. Absolutely. All things considered, a relatively clean game coming out of Otters. The circuit looked great from Venetus. The thought from Bajan just absolutely running the show. Gonna have to see how our next matchup between the Hairnets and Otters have, goes down. We'll be back in about 10 15 minutes with game or round two, excuse me, of our gauntlet. Two's company, we're limited In the end, we lay in the end I seen the end before the beginning But I began anyway, I began Cause all it took was I in for you to say?
Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright.
And the candles glitter like you're in the thriller Heart goes pom, pom, pom Ghostly figures, they can get so bitter Show you want to enter, you can turn back to You don't, you don't know where I've been What's going on inside Where the monsters like to come alive, come alive Do you really wanna know me? I'm really not that cozy It's up to you, so you decide, you decide you love me? Try to break me like a curse, you know that will never work. I'm a little bit absurd, I like dancing on the verge. Anyone can love a pretty little mansion, but could you love a, a haunted, haunted house? Or could you love me now? A haunted, haunted house. I'm a haunted house. A haunted, haunted house. If you're too scared. My wall saying that you better turn around. Wouldn't be the first to try to burn me down. Your mood, you do. Could you love me at my worst? Feel the coffins in the dirt. Try to break me like a curse. You know that will never work. I'm a little bit absurd. I like dancing on the verge. Anyone can love a pretty little mansion. But could you love a, a haunted, haunted house? Oh, could you love me now? A haunted, haunted house. I'm a haunted house. A haunted, haunted house. If you're too scared, get out. A haunted, haunted house. I'm a haunted house. I'm a haunted house. I'm a haunted house. You love her. A haunted, haunted house. Oh, could you love me now? A haunted, haunted house. I'm a haunted house. A haunted, haunted house. If you're too sick inside. A haunted, haunted house. I'm a haunted house. You so quiet, steal the coffins in the dark. Anyone can love a pretty little mansion.
So stay with me Together we'll fall apart All righty, everybody, welcome back. Unfortunately, our second game of this gauntlet is going to be a forfeit by the Hanford Hairnuts. That means your cyberpunk otters, Arthur, will be the winners of the Arthur gauntlet and will be playing next weekend as our number eight seed in the playoffs. Uh, we hope everybody has enjoyed our broadcast today. Unfortunately, had a few forfeits along the way, but we will be back next week with the first round of playoffs. Hope to see everybody there.